bring IP TV. Yeah. Liam Williams now, um, you know, proved himself very much at light middleweight now, uh, burning up the world scene as a middleweight. And uh, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, but um, you're in bed. It suggests Dominic Ingalls has been working you hard this morning. Very hard. He's been, um, he's been putting us through it, you know, but um, to be honest with you, I'm, you know, I had a bit of time off over Christmas. I was a bit ill as well. Um, so I'm just breaking back in myself, you know, I'm not, I'm not really expected to be super fit at this time because, uh, as I said, I had a bit of time off and, and I was not very well either, so. I mean, and how's your health now? You know, obviously you're getting back into it. Is your health okay now, though? Yeah, mate, good. Just, um, I say, obviously, just, just takes a bit of breaking back in, doesn't it? And, um, you know, by this time next week, I'll probably be broke back in and, you know, feeling a lot better. So, at the moment, I'm just very tired all the time. Yeah. I mean, how is it for you at the moment, you know, when you think of fights, not just the pandemic, you know, you know, you, you've got your world title fight, but is it stressful wondering where it's going to be on Drady? I see he's tweeting last night, the fight with Saunders is nearly made for him. Well, what is the latest and what's it like for your mindset? It's a bit hard work at the moment, to be honest. It's, it's pissing me off a little bit, Steve, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, it's just all up in the air, like, you know, what's he doing, what's he doing? Like, realistically, the way I look at it is, um, I shouldn't really be waiting on other people. I'm mandatory. They need to they need to enforce it and um, get me my date and, uh, you know, what's, just give me the full info of what's happening because right now I'm kind of in limbo. And um, I said it's frustrating, but I am training. I'm taking over and I'll be ready when that date comes. And... Um, I, I got full confidence I can go and take that title away from, you know, whoever it may be. Yeah, it's, it must be hard for you. You know, you're thinking it's like anything, you know, like when you buy a house, it's stressful and stuff. You know, it's almost like that. You've got you've got this big thing coming, but you haven't got a clue where it's going to be on Drady. Is Mungia going to step up if he doesn't? That he's talk of Golovkin. And then, you know, you start looking down the rankings where there's that, the Ali Munkar, who's number three in the rankings. You must be, you know, looking at wondering you know, look at all three of those you must be looking at. Yeah, um, to be honest with you, I've been I've been going, I've been looking at it all, you know, where it's like I've got got a lot of time hands uh, here in Sheffield as well. So, you know, a, a lot of time to do a lot of thinking, um, researching, all that kind of crap. So, burn my own head out sometimes, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know what, Steve? I, I honestly don't care. And I was got to the point where, you know, I could, I could not care who I fight. Just give me my chance, and I promise to to produce the goods, and you'll see you'll see the best, Liam. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and if it isn't like you know a marquee fight against an Andrade or even a Mungia, when you win that title, or if you win that, you know, we, we you know we assume you win the title. You know, the big fights are going to be there because you'll have that world title belt and. People will have to start calling you out for once, won't they? Yeah, of course they are. And um, th that will probably be the first time in, you know, a good couple of years that I won't have to go chasing the fight, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be good to have to have people queuing up to fight me instead of me chasing people for a change. <laughs> so, um you know, Lee Hogan, who we work with at VIP TV, I mean, you're, he, he, he wanted to do this interview. Actually, he's your favourite British writer. And uh, he was asking me, um, what's the biggest change um, to, to Dominic Ingle has made to you? Um, do you know what? There's a, there's a number of um, not, not massive changes, but uh, a number of very small changes, which all add up to a big difference, do you know what I mean? So, um, number one, I keep myself in a lot better shape in, you know, in between camps and fight dates and whatever. You know, Dom's kind of drilled that into me, how, you know, the importance of it. Um, that's one thing. I make the weight a lot better. I'm a lot more disciplined in my diet. Dom, um, I usually do my own diet up until about six weeks out, maybe. And then, then Dom takes over and, um, you know, put, puts his experience into play. 
Um, and obviously, number three, Dom is Dom is just a fantastic trainer and te- teaches me, a, you know, a lot of things. Um, he's got a very, very good um, viewing of, of just boxing in general, um, game plans, tactics, um, just just a bit of everything. Really, he's a really knowledgeable guy, and and he he really taught me a lot, and he reads the sport so well. Yeah, I mean, you talk there, you know, doing your own diet and having, you know, stricter on your diet. How, I mean, obviously you're a professional sportsman and, you know, it's what's expected, but how tough does that become when you're living by yourself in Sheffield, your partner's back in Wales, you know, expecting your first baby? You know, what's it <laughs> like tonight? You're getting, you know, you're really frustrated by the situation and who you're going to fight and when. You know, the last time we spoke, it, was, you, you were, it looked like Andrade maybe in America in March. And now, do you ever think, I'm oh, sorry, I feel a bit sorry, I'm going to get a bar of Cadbury's or something? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not going to lie, there, there is times uh, at some point where I, I just think, do you know what, fuck this, just do my head in. And I will go out and eat a big pile of shit or whatever. But to be honest with you, it don't, don't take long until I'm regretting it again and, um, you know, I'm kicking myself. But... It's just one of them. You got to you got to take it as it comes. I I think I am getting better as I get older and more experienced. Um, I I just go with the flow a lot more than I used to. I used to be very very fiery. I I am still to be honest, but I've I control it a lot better now as I'm getting a bit more mature. You know. Yeah, that, that's what I'm getting. You, you know, like you know, you, you're quite you're you know you're a terrific fella, but you are you are you have got that that fiery and that bit of temper, and you are that sort of fella. If you're going to go out and eat a kebab and 10 bars of chocolate, you'll go and do it, whatever anyone tells you. Yeah, do you know, the thing is with me, Steve, is all like, do you know if I've got something in my head, I'm doing it. Yeah. You could be you could be whoever you want to be. You tell me not to do it, and I'm going to say, fuck yourself, I'm doing it. That's just, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just, I'm just, it's just the way I'm wired up, I suppose. But, um, you know, it works for me. I have a treat when I need to. I'll, you know, you, sometimes you need to lay your head down a little bit. But as you say, that works. We've well, seen that in the ring, even in, um, you know, there's been fights where people have expected you to get people out of the way in, in, a, in a couple of rounds. And, you know, you've done that. But, you know, you, you, you're one of those guys, you don't give a monkey who's in that ring. You, you, you're in there to do damage, even if you know in your own mind they're not at your level, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Um, I think one of them things you could never accuse me of is underestimating anybody. Um, I, I come with the same attitude, whether it's Canelo Alvarez or, you know, anybody. Number 500 in the world. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm coming with the, same, with the same mentality. I'm coming to do damage. I train the same, diet the same. Um, and I'm always, I'm always motivated to to make sure I get that win because I know, you know, I've I've suffered a loss in the past and I know how much that can set you back. I'm not willing to do it all over again. Yeah. Well, I I, I wouldn't choose to do it all over again. So. Yeah, you were mentioning there, you know, your mentality, and Lee Lee Hogan again asked this to ask you. He said, um, "What what's changing your mindset that's turned, or if it is mentally that's that's contributed to changing you from a very good fighter." To a world class fighter, I think it's just, I think it's just a, a number of things. As I said to you earlier, um, you know, moving myself from Wales to your Sheffield new gym, <coughs> fresh environment. Uh, that's one thing I, <coughs> I always, um, I, I'm, I'm quite guilty of getting, getting a bit stale um, sometimes and getting fed up of things. And once something's in my head you know, that I'm fed up and I don't like that thing anymore, then that's me, you know, done. I might as well move on. And that's that's what I come to when I was training back home in Wales. And I needed that fresh start to, you know, to give me that motivation. But I'm just around good people. i got a good trainer. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, around good people in the gym. I got, you know, I got a good girlfriend. I, you know, I got another baby on the way. So, 
Um, it's just a number of things to be honest. With you. I feel like um, I feel like at the moment my my life is falling into place, and I'm doing. I, I am where I where I need to be, where I'm meant to be. Yeah. How do you on all the other lads in the gym? Because you know you're all different personalities as such, aren't you? As well in that gym, we you know. You're, you're all likable fellas, but, you know, you're different personalities. You take yourselves maybe out of that gym and you might not, your past may never have crossed and got on with them. Yeah, it's funny, you know, because in the gym, there's obviously a number of us, a number of top level fighters and whatnot, but we're all, I would say, very different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, personalities um and it's funny how we, we all gel so well because we do um we, we all get on so well we're all we're just like one big family you know and um but yeah again it's it's funny because we are very different in our ways yeah it's one of those things where you know there's other fighters in other gyms you think oh, i'll get on with him whereas if they was in another gym you wouldn't think twice about it because of that personality it's not something you think well i've never mixed with someone like that yeah, you're right, mate. This um, it's funny, um, and to be honest, your boxing has brought me a, a lot of people like that, which which you just said, um, people who I probably would never bother with. Um, some of them maybe not even get along with uh, outside, but you know, when it comes to boxing, I've, I've met so many fantastic people and you know, friends for life as well. Yeah. Who's been the strangest matchup? Where have you thought? <laughs> Out of everyone who you're now close to, be it in the gym or in boxing, what what do you think is the strangest matchup where you gelled, where you're you're the opposites? Mm. Don't know. To be honest, it's a difficult question. Um, I'm just trying to think who's who's there. To be honest, I'm not, I'm not very opposite sides of the scale to to any of them. We're all we've all got similarities, but different in our day-to-day lives now you know um i think you know i've got robbie davis living with me in sheffield and uh, me and robbie we we get along uh, you know unbelievable when so a lot of things we can relate to you know we've been talking about family and friends and stuff like that so i believe we are quite um quite alike in many ways yeah is he easier to live with than willie hutchinson <laughs> Say that again, sorry. Is he easier to live with than Willie? For sure. He cleans up after himself. He washes his own clothes. He cooks. Willie didn't do nothing apart from sit in the bed naked all day playing his PlayStation. <laughs> Did you have to do his washing for him? Majority of the time, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I'd, I'd, obviously, I drink a lot of fluids and a lot of water. So I'm walking from my bedroom in, in the old place in the flat head from my bedroom to the bathroom and he's obviously in his bedroom he lies on the bed yeah on top of the sheets with his door wide open playing playstation not one piece of clothing on bollock naked unbelievable not a care in the world and he just puts his thumb up he's like all right <laughs> oh, yeah, so. oh brilliant just go back he's an absolute idiot i swear He's a good fighter and he's not a bad player. He's a deep good fella as well. He's an even better fighter, I think. Yeah, I love him. He's he's great. He's he's awesome. Um, just mention that you know you don't want a loss a, a loss again. Would you like Liam Smith again at middleweight? Yeah, I'd love it. Um, I've stated that a couple of times yeah. in in you know a couple of different interviews and whatnot. But you know. Um, First fight, I believe I should have won with him. Second, maybe not so. He probably, you know, he did outwork me a bit and uh, he deserved it. I had my reasons for that. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I believe I've improved so much um, physically and mentally. I've, I've grown up a lot since then. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't expect him really to just give me give me another fight without... Having something to offer him, which is, yeah. which is fair enough, and it's just good business, you know. Um, but I'm, you know, if I go and win that that world middleweight title, then I'm I'm sure he'll come knocking, and, and he would love the chance to, you know, try and beat me again. And I'm sure you'd love that as a first, as a defence early in your reign to set that straight, wouldn't you? 
yeah, it'd be awesome because obviously that's the only man I've lost to. You know, um, credit to Liam. He, he is... He is a good fighter. He's a very good fighter. Um, I, I do. I can honestly say I feel he's underrated um, because of his style and stuff. I think sometimes he does look. He does look quite basic. He's got very good shot variety, good engine, um, defense. He's he's got a bit of everything to be fair. And um, you know, credit to him. We've had our differences and stuff, but he's you know he's a good fighter, and you can't take that away from him. The whole family. Yeah. And the other one at middleweight would be, who's now a boxer, but it's Chris Eubank. But he seems to fight, I don't know, once every couple of years now. So that fight must be so far in the distance, is it? Yeah, again, I've said I won that fight, Lords, I don't know how many times. Um, whether it will happen or not in the future, I don't know. But let's be honest, you can't really, um, you can't really put any time and effort into them, no. uh, Eubanks, because... Because they are time wasters and um, make unreasonable demands and and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, just leave them to win. And if they want to the fight, they'll I'm sure they'll come when I've got something to offer. Yeah, I mean, do you ever see you jumped up to middleweight? This final question: Do you ever see yourself um, eventually, you know, heading into the 168 pound division where there's some, you know? There might be some real serious money to be made, or is this your weight now, 160, that you moved up to? Yeah, definitely. Um, do you know, I, I, won't, I won't say any names, but do you know when, obviously, this all this stuff has been going on with the middleweight title, Andrade, um, you know, Mungia, all this kind of stuff. I, I've, been, I've been texting my manager. I'm just saying, like, look, match me against this person, 168. I'll go up right now just just give me a good fight do you know what I mean but um, I, I'm pretty sure I will move up to 168 in the future and you know if, if the right fight was there I'd go right now yeah Liam fantastic talking to, to us today even though we might have woken you from your afternoon rest uh, and I just hope your fight turns up very quickly and very soon and you haven't got too much uh more stress over it because you know you, you deserve the, the, the fight the world title yeah thanks mate and, and I appreciate the um, you have what you haven't woke me up by the way I'm, this is what I do normally from about dinner time till late afternoon train and back to bed again that's all I do <laughs> alright well thanks very much lovely talking and catching up with you Liam and hopefully I'll see you again very soon yeah Definitely, mate. Good speaking to you. Uh, take care. You take care. All the best to your missus and uh, her health over the next couple of months. Because uh, big time. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it, pal. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. For all boxing info, news, and latest interviews, amateur and pro across the north, click and subscribe. VIP boxing promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.